What's up, everybody? Back again. Back for day three of Packers training camp. I couldn't be more excited again. I just, I love every minute of this. I love watching it. I love just seeing how guys perform. I love seeing who steps up. I love seeing who's making big plays. I just like seeing how the the uh, coaches pick the guys that come together and, and what kind of alignments they pick and um, who's who they rotate in and out and who they, you know, are trying to give a look to and it's just all of it couldn't be more exciting. The Packers, obviously with Rodgers, you always feel like they have a chance. And not every team in the league has that feeling going into the season. And obviously the Packers have been not in the Super Bowl the last couple years, obviously since 2010 or 11. Um, so it's been 10 years, over 10 years. And every year since then, we've thought we were going to go. We thought, you know, 2014, when <laughs> that Seattle um, uh, onside kick, we thought we were going then. And then, you know, against the 49ers, against Kaepernick, all those different times when he ran us out of the stadium in Lambeau. So, like, and then even later on, when the last couple of years when we had the NFC Championship games against San Fran and we lost, and then Tampa we lost, and, and then last year again was San Fran. So we've been so close, just knocking on the door constantly and just never getting over the hump and so every time we go into a season I just I'm so optimistic you know my father actually asked me to this today we you know if um if I really thought they had a chance this year and every year I'm like just so optimistic about us even through the Mike Sherman years (laughs) back then so it's just like oh man um so I get so excited and try to explain everything and you know he just he doesn't really understand a lot of it so it is what it is but I still think that they have a really solid team, a really solid core. The defense um, is going to be top five. The running backs could be top five. The offensive line could be top five. Rodgers will be top one maybe again, top three for sure. And then it comes down to the receivers. What can they do as a unit? What can they do to replace Devontae Adams? That is going to be the biggest question marks really surrounding the uh, the Packers season this year. The offensive line is another big question mark, but I feel like Whatever best five they put together is going to be solid enough to um, at least protect Rodgers well enough to win some games. They might not be the elite, elite offense. They could be if Bakhtiari's back, Elkin Jenkins is back. They have, you know, Zach Tomlin is a rotational player. Well, Josh Meyer's back. There's all guys that um, can really contribute a lot and be just, you know, all could be Pro Bowl players if they were back. Whoever they fill in with those positions are going to be the best five, obviously, because that's what they do. But I feel like they have so much talent at those positions that whoever they plug and play, is it's going to be enough, at least, um, on top of all the other pieces. There's not going to be as much pressure on the offense because the defense is going to be so good that I think it's going to really help allow these other younger players to to develop without having to rush it, without having to be counted on too early in big of too big of situations that they you know that they're just not ready for. So I'm excited. Uh day three was more of a walkthrough. Um not, you know, not like the last two days or um the day that of tomorrow will be it will be, you know, more contact. It's just they they like to give these guys a chance to kind of line up, see where they're lining up. It's like I said, it's just a walkthrough. Um, I'll figure out the alignment configurations, figure out who's going to be with the ones and who's going to be with the twos. And, and they just kind of do the mental reps. You know, it's a lot of just making sure you're in the right spot at the right time. And you know what your assignment is. And, you know, some of the biggest issues is in preseason, you know, there's a lot of rotating players, but it's guys not knowing when they're supposed to be out on the field, you know, special teams and, and situations like that. So, that's what days like this are for, trying to get all those kinks worked out, figure out who's supposed to be where and who's supposed to do what. And then it's good for other guys just to kind of be able to ask questions. Why am I doing that? Why am I doing this? Why, you know, and Rodgers probably is teaching a lot, just telling guys where he wants them to be, how he wants them to run certain routes. It's a lot of it's a lot of teaching, and it's just it's a really good day, I think, for these younger players. The speed of the NFL is so quick, so fast. It's just, you know, so I think slowing it down for them and trying to just show them what they're supposed to do gives them a chance to do it faster now, like when, up to game speed as they they kind of see what their assignment is and how it, the play kind of breaks down. It's, it's interesting when they do it more in a slow motion fashion because you can kind of see how it's designed to 
um, you know, either like a run play, how it's designed to open up a hole or, or, you know, a crease or whatever. And then on pass plays, it's interesting to see how the guy gets schemed. You know, there's just all kinds of stuff. Kind of funny, though, Rizzo, uh, Douglas, Rizzo Douglas was able to still um, get an interception during the walkthrough today. So <laughs> go figure. Um, he's just that type of guy. So crazy that no other team wanted him. I just, you know, I kind of heard of, I like, knew of him before he came to the Packers just because he was on the Eagles and everything. I remember that a little bit, but never expected him to be the player he is now. So pretty awesome that the Packers got him. They took a, a chance on him and they took a chance on Campbell. And look at they both became Pro Bowl players and they both got big contracts. You know, um, Douglas got three three years, like 21 mil, I think, and then and Campbell got the five year, 50 mil. So pretty awesome that they were able to come back. Um, part of that whole being able to pay them was the trade of Devontae Adams. Um, his contract would have been too big to kind of keep both of those guys. So a lot of people want to blame Rodgers for his contract, but it's just we got to keep more players anyway. So it's – and then I think with the wide receivers, Sammy Watkins is back. He came back today along with Randy Ramsey, the outside linebacker. Rasheed Walker, the uh, tackle out of Penn State – I've been talking about him a little bit just because I, I do believe he could be a, a, a player in this league. He's pretty raw and has needs some time to, uh, to develop, but I do like his just his size and his, his footwork. You know, I just think he's a developmental player that can be something. He just needs to be on the field, and to see him back is exciting. And then Akil Byers is back too. Um, he's a guy who I don't feel like is going to make the team, but it's good to see more guys added to the field and not any guys coming off the field. Knock on wood, there was a lot of injuries in the NFL to um, today. Yeah, it was um, so Lucas Patrick went down. Um, uh, Micah Hyde went down. Kyler Fackrell went down. Just a lot of, yeah, so it's a lot of Packers. Um, <laughs> that's all ex-Packers, really. And it's just, you know, it's the fact that they were we're on the Packers. It sucks that they're hurt, but just show us that these practices can re they really can come up and, and grab you. So you got to be paying attention. You got to be, you know, let being what let, let yourself be coached by these these coaches and and really just do your job. And everybody has to be safe. You know, it's you're all teammates, so that's so important. But awesome to see what Sammy Watkins back at practice. He's route running. He's so crisp, so fluid, so fast still. Still looks like he's running four three four four like he did coming out. You know he's a big body guy, strong, physical. He's kind of got the uh, Debo body style in a way, but he's a little, a little uh, not as solid. But you know just that six one, um, just fast, strong. I mean he's stronger than he looks, and he just runs really good routes. I think the fact that he was able to get back so quick is going to be huge. We didn't really know what happened with Watkins because it was a non-football injury. So I kind of just figured, I thought, when I first heard about it, I thought he just was, you know, just hadn't made it to there yet. I didn't know it was an injury, and then I heard it was a non-football-related injury. So I'm like, oh, well, he must have done, he did something somehow, you know, obviously. And was just hoping it wasn't going to be serious. I've seen it too many times with Watkins with hamstring injuries and just being hurt and just, you know, not being able to be on the field. And so to see him out there, see him practicing was awesome. Um He's. He was asked during an interview whether he thought um, by Co by Randall Cobb. He was asked whether Patrick Mahomes is better or Aaron Rodgers is better, and he said, "I played with both of them." And I want to be honest. And as as amazing as Mahomes is, Rodgers is just on another level. So <laughs> go figure. But probably something he should say. He'd probably say that if he was with Mahomes now and he had been with Rodgers now or in the past. But it is what it is. Still awesome to hear, saying the right things, looking great on the field. That's all you can ask. Um, like I said, Randy Ramsey's back. He's one of those outside linebacker um, alternative or reserves, um, maybe the third or fourth guy. But he has to be on the field. He's got to show what he can do. Um, Jonathan Garvin came back from practice uh, the other day, so he's already a little step behind. And then Ladarius Hamilton, who is another outside linebacker who's kind of jumping on the scene here, I think he might give um, Ramsey a run for his money. So we'll have to see about that battle. The o line, the um, outside linebacker battle is really starting to become um, a focal point of this this camp because T Tipa Galai is also 
vying for some, you know, work with the ones, and he's doing really well. I, I liked him. He's, you know, he's he was such a raw talent when we, you know, when the Packers signed him, but he seems like he's got the motor and, like, the work effort, um, ethic and just puts in the, in the effort. So I'm excited to see him too, but, um, yeah, having Ramsey back and, and Watkins back and Walker back and Byers back, just really awesome to start. There's pretty much everybody's back except for a few guys. Um, Crosby's still not kicking yet, and then all the um, ACL guys, uh, like Hill and Elkin Jenkins and Tanyan and Bakhtiari. So hopefully we see them soon. I know they, um, they're they rehabbing or trying to rehab and everything, so uh, we're just waiting on them to get the okay. Um, so as day one and day two went by, we kind of already talked about Romeo Dobbs. Um, number 87, six foot one, 200 pounds or so, out in Nevada. He played with Carson Strong down there, who is, you know, he's got an arm, and he really was a solid wide receiver for the Wolfpack. He was able to be their go-to guy. You know, the defense knew that that, that's who they were going to. He'd still get open. He'd still beat him over the top. He's got the speed to get deep. Um, I always remember, like, Devontae never really got caught from behind much unless, unless it was a really, really long one. He pretty much had enough speed to get in, into the end zone if he ever had a step on somebody. Dobbs is even faster than him. Obviously, he's younger than him, and it looks like he could be that guy. To see number 87 again be that guy with Rodgers is going to be so awesome. Dobbs looks like he is ready to become a star. I've been saying it since before camp. I've been saying it since we basically drafted him that I think Dobbs is ready to or is going to be the best out of these three rookies for the Packers in. He has the potential because he's got the body type and the athletic ability. He has the potential to really be Rodgers' like number one or number two target. I didn't think Lazard was going to make – I didn't know what to think about Lazard. I wanted to believe that he was ready to make this huge wide receiver one leap, but I didn't know what to expect. I really didn't know if he'd be, make that leap or if Dobbs would just surpass him and show everybody that he should be number one. But Lazard has fit the bill. He has done everything he's been asked like always, making incredible catches, running great routes, being that leader for those young guys, and it looks like he's going to take that wide receiver one spot. But to have Dobbs as, as two and Sammy Watkins as three, if he, if he really comes on here, and then be able to throw Cobb in there, and it's just, and then when Christian Watson comes back, we're going to have a real dynamic player that, you know, we can bring onto the field and just send deep and as they're kind of covering these shorter routes with Dobbs and, and Lazard, we got a guy 50 yards down the field. So I'm really excited. I think these receivers, you know, they come out of college so much more ready to play than they used to. You saw what Jamar Chase did last year, that 266 yard game. And so these receivers come in and they're ready to go. They're ready to play. Obviously Dobbs is big and physical too. And, and Watson's, you know, even taller, but he's not as, you know, strong. He's a little more lanky, but Still, these guys are, are, you know, they get so many snaps in high school and in college. And so by the time they get to the pros, they should be ready to go. And that's why it's so easy for these scouts and these and the staff to, to really determine who's ready and who's going to be ready and who's not. So super awesome to see Dobbs just come in right away and just, just flourish. You know, like you never know what to expect with rookies. You don't know how guys are going to translate. You don't know what's going to come of it. And so to see him do so well is just amazing. Starting O-line for this, the walkthrough today, day three, um, they did not have Zach Tom uh, with the first five. They didn't even have him as the guy rotating in. That was Cole, Cole Van Lannon. But he got a lot of time with the twos today, and that made they gave him a lot of reps, so that was pretty good. But the starting O-line was Yash at left tackle, um, John Runyon Jr. at left guard, Josh Myers at center, uh, Zach Hansen at right guard, and then Royce Newman at right tackle with Cole Van Landen, like I said, rotating in and out for those some of those guys. So they're kind of a six six guys. Um, I do like Yash at left tackle. He played well enough. You know, this this O-line I think could be good mm-hmm. enough to start. I don't, I'm not super excited about Royce Newman. I'd rather put Yash at right tackle and then throw Tom at left tackle. And I haven't seen anything about Sean Ryan. I really liked him coming in. So I don't know if he's just not 
really there yet or, or what's going on with him. So I'm, that's something for me to watch. I didn't think Cole Van Landen would be with the ones and Zach Hansen, I didn't think he'd be with the ones. So to see those guys kind of step up and, and be the in there um, shows that we do have a lot of guys who are probably starting caliber in the NFL. And then when you get Elkin Jenkins back and you get uh, David Bakhtiari back, it's going to really solidify that offensive line. And hopefully we get those guys back at some point in this season if it's halfway through. At least by the playoffs, you know, they should, I think they have to be back by a week six or so or, or something like that for um, if they're on injured reserve. I think it might be week eight. But um, either way, they're able to come back. And I do um, think that they'll be elite once they get all their starters out on the field. Um, something that we haven't had in uh, – over a year, you know, over a year now. So the D line, interesting to see because it was just the walkthrough. They threw out the nickel defense, and I wanted to kind of see how they laid it out. Of course, Amos and um, Savage were the safeties, and then you had Jair, Stokes, and Douglas as the three corners making it the nickel, and then um, Preston Smith and Gary on the outsides with Clark and Dean Lowry in the middle. Now, see, having Dean Lowry in there is a guy who's been in the system for a while, you know, a guy that the Packers kept and the Packers paid, a guy the Packers drafted. So they do like him, and he seems to always kind of have a knack for being by the ball. I'm not opposed to having him be in there. There's enough really great talent around him that I think that if he's the weakest link, it's a pretty good defense to have Um, because he's still just a really, like, powerful guy, and he's going to work his butt off you know he's just got relentless effort and that's what he does and that's how he got here and that's how he stays here and and so that's the type of guy you want down there and then along with the guys who i just mentioned it's gonna be a really stout really stout defense and that's just the nickel so you know you replace you you send other guys in and out but oh yeah then you have quay walker and and devondre campbell in the middle sorry forgot about those two (laughs) i said i said preston smith and Rashawn Gary, but I forgot about the the middle linebacker guys who who to me are the most important. Campbell was the biggest signing of this offseason besides Aaron Rodgers, of course. But to me, having that quarterback of the defense in the middle, a guy that was an All Pro, a guy that showed that he can cover receivers and running backs and tight ends, and a guy that can you know get sideline to sideline, and a guy who doesn't like to do a lot of this, a guy that just plays, a guy that's not in it for the spotlight, a guy that just wants to play football. That's what I love about him. And he's showing a, a, a young, very raw, very talented, very skilled, athletic Quay Walker how to play like him. And I think, you know, they're basically the same physical person, 6'3", same kind of speed. And it's just awesome to have those two guys. So couldn't forget about them. Sorry about that. Um, I just was getting excited about talking about Dean. So it's going to be, no matter what they put out there, even if, you know, if they take one of the the defenders out or the other the second middle linebacker out and put an extra D lineman in, whether it's Reed or, or Wyatt, it's just going to be a very stout defense. You can't, with Jair and Stokes and Rajul, it's like, where are you going to throw the football? I guess we'll see. So, um, other guys that were in with the ones today, like I said, Ladarius Hamilton, a guy to watch. Tipa Galai, Sean Davis was in the, with the safeties, Vernon Scott with the safeties, um, you know, on offense, it was Watkins, Cobb, Dobbs, Lazard, Winfrey working with the uh, with the ones. So Winfrey to see see him on there was kind of a big deal. And then you know, obviously Cobb's out there, but Dobbs working with the ones, working with the twos, working with the threes. Doesn't matter. He's doing great with everybody. It's really a sight to see um, this Packers offense with you know if they have Watkins and Lazard and Cobb and Dobbs and then you know Tyler Davis or Deguara. Mercedes Lewis, it's just, they've got weapons, they've got guys that are can do multiple things, um, and guys with very different skill sets, body st- body types and everything, so it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of play calling Lafleur comes up with and and see um, what direction this, this offense really goes. Uh, with the running back talent, with Jones and Dylan, it's like you could just run the ball constantly. When you have Aaron Rodgers, you want to throw the ball as much as you can. With these young guys, you might want to not throw it as much, but you got guys like Lazard and Watkins and who and Dobbs who look like they're ready to be the go-to guys. So, well, not Watkins yet, but at least Lazard and, and Dobbs. So, very interesting to see how this Packers offense formulates. 
Um, like I just mentioned, the the three tight ends with the ones were, were Tyler Davis, Mercedes Lewis, and Josiah DeGuara. Have not heard pretty much anything about Josiah DeGuara. Um, all I heard was before camp that he was kind of on the bubble, and now I haven't heard much of him in camp. So try to look into that, try to see what's going on with him. I'm not really sure, but we will um, keep an eye out on that. So... Dobbs has been the star of camp. He has been the guy everybody's talked about. He has been the one that, you know, has make real, made some of the really spectacular plays of camp. And Lafleur had this to say about Romeo Dobbs: Romeo is one of the first guys in the building. He's already kind of established a routine for himself, which is something that a lot of these rookies have a hard time finding. Once they do, they can really take off. And that's just him just seeing him in the first couple of days like this guy comes in early he's ready to work he's studied up and knows what his responsibility is and his assignments are and he's got the physical gifts that once he knows what he's doing up here everything down here is just going to do what he already knows how to do and that's what you know makes it so much easier for these guys when when they come in prepared they're able to stop thinking so much and just start reacting and that's how you become you know, one of the really, you know, good players in this league. So, Romeo being able to <laughs> watch guys like, you know, Cobb and, and Lazard, how they conduct their business is just is just huge. And, obviously, no one wants to be somebody that Aaron Rodgers has to get onto about doing something. So, for him to take the initiative and be um, above and beyond what is expected, and just and, and then put put it out on the field as well, it's just huge. It really is. It just shows what kind of guys that Goody and Lafleur are looking for when they draft. Um, you know, they, they get guys like like Zach Tom and, and Romeo Dobbs who are just re- ready to come in and just do whatever is asked of them and just and just play and they and they can do it and they're good and it's just. I think Goody with the the first two picks in the first round, and then getting trading up for Watson, and and then getting these guys later on, you know, like like I said, it's just it just shows that he knows what he's doing, and it's, I'm really very impressed. Um, yeah, it's just once we put the pads on, it'll be different. We'll see what happens in preseason, but watching you know Jordan Love work with a lot of these guys, you can see him taking that step. You can see him getting to the next level. These young guys are starting to come along with it. Like I said, they come into the NFL so much more prepared than they used to that it's just it's they're ready to go right now. And either you have it or you don't, and you, they pretty much know if you have it right away. And so quarterbacks take a little longer to develop, obviously, but most other positions either they, they can tell pretty quickly. Um, that's I just I'm just excited for love. Year three was kind of that year Rodgers came in and started showing everybody that, yeah, Brett Favre could be let go. They kind of knew that he had something. Obviously, that game against Dallas showed that he was really ready. But um, I know Love came into the league 2020 during COVID. He didn't really get all that offseason work, so that really slowed him down. So he's still kind of not a year behind, but like not as far ahead as he could have been with that first and that first initial rookie period with all that offseason work you learn so much you, it's just it's kind of your introduction and he didn't get any of that so he kind of had to learn a different way and with all the drama going around about the Packers drafting him and Rodgers and you know it had to be tough for him so everybody just pump your brakes on your feelings and views of love now that some of that stuff's water under the bridge and Rodgers is here and Rodgers is playing and Goody and everybody's happy now Love can kind of just be that backup and just kind of just come into his own, and I'm very excited to see what he does. I really can't wait to see how he performs. He's probably going to get most of the uh, preseason snaps. I know we have Danny Etling, and maybe they'll bring another guy in, but I know they don't really think Etling is the future, so I'm guessing Love will be out there most of the time, and I really, you know, I'm excited to see what he does. So, um, Lastly, kickoff return something I, I like to pay attention to just we haven't had special team success whether it comes from punt returns or kick returns it always seems like we're starting behind the 20 or you know otherwise it's a touchback but if we do return it you know even Colin Hill tore his ACL on a, on a kickoff return he should not have returned 
And then Amari Rodgers didn't do anything basically all year. He didn't do any, like I don't even know what his average was, but it not very good. And I was hoping he would that was gonna be where he succeeded. So he's kick returner number two now, and they're letting Rico Gafford. He's now a cornerback. He was a wide receiver that switched, or I think he was a corner that switched to receiver, then switched back to corner now, but maybe he was always a receiver. But either way, this guy has blazing speed, and we see it on all the different special teams, but the fact that he's kick returner one, I'm excited to watch him, and he's probably going to make the roster at this point for his special teams, being on kickoff coverage, punt coverage, um, you know, punt return and, and kick, being the kick return guy. And with that speed, you're going to want to get him the ball on offense somehow. I don't know what they're going to do. Obviously, he's very raw and not really the route runner that he needs to be. But still, with that speed and with his um, ability to contribute on special teams, I really think that's a guy to watch out for. Um, you know, speed kills in the NFL. So we will see. But... All right, that's day three of training camp. We will be back for day four, and then we will talk about everything else coming leading up to the season. I cannot wait. Obviously, you guys need to know I'm excited, but I will see you in the next video. Peace out.